You've watched Time Warner Cable Metro Sports on Channel 232. But beginning April 19th, watch it on Channel 310. Same great programming, new channel. You'll still get Kansas City sports. We expect to win every year. Huskers. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. Husker basketball recap show. And local sports. Find out of it there. in the sports category. Channel 310. Time Warner Cable Metro Sports. Well, this spring, there's been a lot of hype around the new offensive system, but today we're going to talk a little bit about the defense. We heard from Carl Pliny. I'm Nebraska on a man's Katie Falco here with Huskers Illustrated, Chris Schmidt. And like I said, we heard from Carl today, and he seemed very excited and just comfortable with where they are this spring. Absolutely. The offense has kind of been getting the buzz throughout the, the spring practices, but the defense, you know how good Nebraska's black shirts have been the last two years, honestly carrying the team for stretches of two seasons, and no different this year. The offense is going to try and pull their weight this upcoming season, but the defense, Carl Pliny, very happy with. Specifically, the secondary, Josh Mitchell and Siante Evans, two corners. Siante saw some time last year uh, against Missouri when Dennard went down with a concussion. So Siante is kind of a favorite to come in and take that other corner spot opposite uh, Dennard. But you look at Josh Mitchell, he's a guy that could fit into the nickel spot. He's had an outstanding spring. And some names in the secondary at safety to remember. Harvey Jackson, a recruit a couple of years ago out of Louisiana, redshirted the year ago. Harvey's doing well. And then uh, Cooper out of Illinois, a kid that Nebraska got late from the Chicago area. He's done some nice things. So the secondary really looking good. And the defensive line's playing very fast. Specifically, you look at uh, what Cameron Meredith would have brought to the table. He's been out. Jason Anchor, Josh Williams, guys that have stepped in for him that have done th nice things at the defensive end spot. And then Eric Martin. Let's talk about old caveman, number 46. Martin sporting the Mohawk today as he was helped off the practice field, just a dinged ankle. But, Katie, when you look at what Martin's been able to do, he moved to the defensive end spot last year. Well, that paid off this year as he's had an outstanding spring. Yeah, Carl seemed to have a very good impression with what he's seen so far from Eric. Yeah, Eric Martin's been great. Thaddeus Randall, another guy who's seen time at the defensive tackle spot in the absence of Jared Crick. And I'll tell you what, Thaddeus is a guy who's put on weight. We highlighted that last week. But he's just been able to play more physical and more technically sound when it comes to shedding some blocks against those big guys up front. So Thaddeus uh, Randall, a guy that's also done some nice things. And uh, you know what, Nebraska's defense will, will show how well they've played this spring come spring game. And you know we're throwing out a lot of names here, and obviously you have to talk a a lot about some of these top players, you know, Crick and Dennard and David and Austin Cassidy, all names that Carl was talking about today and how they kind of need to step up and be a leader this year. Right, and vocal leadership is something that Nebraska fans have always wanted, and you can list a number of guys that were leaders at their time at Nebraska. Last year's team, uh, they did have some vocal leaders, but guys that maybe kept quiet a year ago will not do that this year. Eric Martin could be one of those vocal leaders. You think of Endomic and Sue, kind of the quiet warrior. He wasn't as vocal as maybe maybe some other defensive linemen in the past. So Nebraska, no doubt, a, a vocal leadership, very important to find and use this spring. And with the move to the Big Ten, you know, the defense is going to have to do some things different because they're going to, you know, more of a run-heavy league. You know, what was Carl saying that we're going to see different this fall, or what have they been, you know, really working on this spring? Well, they've just tried to be physical, Katie, and it's there's this perception out there by the media and by a number of fan bases, specifically in the SEC and even some Big 12 fans, that you've got uh, kind of plow horses in the Big Ten. And that was kind of my impression, too, until you take a look back the last several years years you have a team named Ohio State playing in the national championship and oh yeah Ohio State's putting several guys in the first round of the NFL draft with great speed so that uh, unfair stereotype of the Big Ten about being slow and not as athletic uh, not so in Carl's eyes when it comes to how fast they can be he doesn't think Nebraska is going to come into the Big Ten speed wise and blow the doors off of the Big Ten but Nebraska will be uh, pretty comparable when it comes to speed but the misnomer about the Big Ten being slow that's not accurate so we can expect to see a lot more more movement this fall. You'll see some more movement and you'll see some some teams when it comes to you know Wisconsin or, or even an Ohio State.
that can play power football. You still have your spread offenses when you look at a Purdue or Northwestern or even an Illinois. So Nebraska should be pretty set with whatever they face offensively. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the Black Shirts bring to the field on the spring game, which is set for about a week on April 16th. For Oscars Illustrated, Chris Schmidt, I'm Katie Falco for Time Warner Cable's Nebraska On Demand.